Good evening my fellow celebrity big brother enthusiasts and welcome back to my channel Sofa's Bud Reviews. I hope you're having a lovely week so far and in case you haven't not to worry because the weekend is within reach and with that weekend comes a double eviction. Yes I cannot wait. I know who I want to go. I don't know who will go. I'm still quite on the fence but listen I'm gonna be rooting for two in particular. <laughs> And I'm so sorry that I couldn't come on and talk shit last night, but I had stayed up the night before so late watching Twitter just go nuts on Louis Walsh. So I was very tired. <laughs> so let's get back into it. OK, so we are talking about Thursday night's episode, episode 10, face to face nominations. So Louis is still pretty salty at the beginning of the episode because obviously the night before there had been a task where they do, you know, a, a jelly bean challenge and they have to ask questions with every jelly bean so who's the most honest who's the best looking who's the least trustworthy and so on and so forth now there was a lot of nice things said we didn't get a whole lot of this game but suffice to say that any of the questions that called for you know a bit of negativity or to point the finger at someone in an unflattering way Louis Walsh was the one being pointed at so he was called lazy and he was also called the least trustworthy and I mean both appropriate and we kind of start out tonight's episode with a rule break, not one, but two rule breaks, in fact. And Louis Walsh is involved with both. Are we surprised? Not at all. And you know something? For as much of a plonker as he is and as horrible a human being as he is showing himself to be, I want him to be saved on Friday. I'm just going to say that it might make me <laughs> very, very confusing and unpopular because I don't like Louis Walsh. But I do think that he is housemate material. He knows the assignment and he is giving us great TV without even knowing that he's giving us great TV. Like he has no idea of all the Jedward shitstorm that's swirling around outside. So I say let's just keep him in. I have tried to put a VPN on my system to trick it into thinking that I'm in the UK and it still won't let me download the app and vote. So please, you get five votes, I think. If anyone's listening and has a spare vote, can you please vote to save Louis on my behalf? <laughs> I do go to the church and light candles regularly for people. And even though I'm not Catholic, they tend to work. So I will light a candle for you in exchange for that vote. But anyway, back to the episode, okay? So Louis and Marisha are the culprits of the first real break. And this was actually quite a funny exchange. I was surprised that this got picked up as a real break. But look, it is what it is. Louis had basically said to Levi in the bedroom, you know, all those fuckers are going to vote for me now every week. And he didn't realise that Marisha was sitting on the bed or lying in bed across from them. And they all had a big laugh about it. It was actually quite a light moment. I don't think that there was um, grounds to call that a rule break that warranted punishment. But look, OK. And Marisha, the reason that Marisha got dragged in was because she jokingly said, yes, we will. And it was a complete tongue in cheek comment. I don't like and I don't think Big Brother thinks that this was serious. I honestly think they just wanted a reason to punish him and put him in an apron and make him do the dishes honest to God. And Marisha was his accomplice in this. So she gets to be like his assistant. They were super cute aprons. But I did find it very funny that Louis Walsh does not know how to hold a dustpan. Did anybody else notice that? <laughs> and then the other real break was Louis saying, oh God, who was he saying it to? I think it was Nikita. Sorry, I had to edit that out. I got the wrong person. It was Nikita. So Louis is saying to Nikita, um, I don't want to be voted for again. Please take note of that. <laughs> Nikita is like, I don't want to know. We shouldn't be talking about this. So yeah, look, that one I think is fair. Although I was always of the impression that you're not allowed to discuss who you voted for or who you're going to vote for. I never thought that there were any rules about like campaigning for yourself, but apparently there is. We get a little moment of Ek and Sue in the diary room explaining to Big Brother how psychology works. And I personally feel very grateful that she imparts her wisdom on us so regularly. But actually, before we move on to the fun fair and the circus and the kissing booth, I got thinking when they were giving it about rule breaks and nominations. Does anybody remember Nasty Nick? Like back in the very, very beginning when Celebrity, not Celebrity Big Brother, just Big Brother in general was new. And he had been breaking the rules by passing notes to housemates and telling them who they should nominate. And this was back in like the dark ages of Big Brother where it wasn't luxury. There was no pool. There was no <laughs> like 
cushy surroundings. They had like a chicken coop out the back to make their food. And they weren't allowed pens or paper. So he obviously like smuggled it in up his ass and he got caught. And the housemates like rallied around Craig who led the charge against Nasty Nick. And they all sat down around a big table and Craig like called him out in this big dramatic moment. And he then had to like, you know, go into the diary room and give a big remorseful speech about how you live by the sword you die by the sword and he like left the house in shame like shame shame you know that was very much yeah the golden ages of big brother but anyway getting back to our nominations today the guys get this fun fair out in the garden and it looks really really cool there's popcorn there's games and there's a lovely moment where they tell marisha you know step up to this fortune teller machine and pick you know a a ball and it will tell you your fortune and they use this to let Marisha know that in the outside she's been nominated for an Olivier award I'd never heard of these but apparently it's a big deal and she's nominated for best actress for guys and dolls and she just has this huge reaction she is so happy everyone is cheering for her and delight it was a really really lovely moment and I'm so you know I'm so happy the big brother actually told her because I mean, that's a big deal. And if you were her loved ones outside, you'd be itching for her to find out. So yeah, they did right by her. When you consider in, you know, older celebrity big brothers, like whatever the one was with Danielle. Do you remember the one with Jade Goody, Danielle, and your one from S Club 7? Danielle was like a wag and she was going out with Teddy Sheringham and he had dumped her while she was in the house and she had to wait till she got voted out for being a racist and then found out that she had been dumped weeks ago. I mean, again, I'll say it again. We just don't get Big Brother like that anymore. But we're on our way because this is this is a decent season. I will say that. And I promise that is my last nostalgic throwback moment. We are now squarely focused on the nominations for tonight. So the fun fair comes to an end and the housemates are brought inside and they're standing around in this kissing booth. Now, I had weird feelings about this. This is face to face nominations and they all basically have to stand up nominate their two people and then go over to each of the people that they've nominated and give them a kiss. I wouldn't like this. Now, I wouldn't refuse anyone a kiss like, you know, some people, but I I don't think I would like this. I don't think I'd feel comfortable not just receiving the kiss from someone who's nominated me, but I don't think I'd feel comfortable nominating someone and then going over and kissing them. It's a bit too Judas for me. Like super, super next level awkward. But anyway, they they all go along with it for the most part. And Bradley is up first and he's in tears. And he votes for Louis for his usual reason, laziness. And he votes for Eck and Sue because they haven't had as many deep conversations. Next, we get Colson. And Colson, of course, Louis, Louis's lazy. And he also votes for Levi because in the, the task the night before with the jelly beans... Levi had kind of given a backhanded compliment. He was asked who's the most boring person in the house. And he said, you know, well, up until yesterday, I would have said Colson. And then he went on and said nice things. But Colson kind of took the boring part and he took it to heart. And he went into the bathroom and had a little cry and gotten his feelings about it. I mean, I thought it was a bit of an overreaction. I like Colson, but... Would you really cry if somebody that you didn't know that well said that they thought you were boring, but now that they don't think that you are? I don't know. But maybe he was having an off day. David gets up next and he votes for Levi. He said that when I talk to Levi, I ask him lots of questions. He doesn't really ask me anything. And then he also votes for Louis (laughs) because Louis lazy. We're going to hear a lot of that. Next, actually, things get a little bit spicy. So, Ekin Sue is up to vote and she votes for Louis. What? Excuse me? Like, hold the phone. And I think everybody, including Louis, is gobsmacked because she has been firmly up his sphincter the whole time that she's been in there. But now, of course, the night before, she heard the whole nation booing him when we went live to the house. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Or maybe it just has something to do with the fact that everyone who's gone before her has voted Louis and there seems to be like a clear theme and she just wants to fall in line. Considering she went up to Sharon and said, Sharon, who should I be friends with when you leave? It doesn't really paint her as an independent thinker. But okay, she's turned on her friend Louis. And then she votes for Fern. And 
this this the Fern Ekansu exchange was very interesting. So she votes for Fern and says that, you know, we haven't really connected and um, you haven't really asked me any questions about my personal life. And I think Ekansu has made this point before. Can't remember if it was in nominations or not. And I said that I felt that that was bullshit because Fern, even on the first night, like Ekansu was given her whole bloody story of her career so far and all of her insecurities and Fern was full on like conducting an interview with her but whatever so right after Eck and Sue it's Fern's turn to vote and of course she votes for Louie for being lazy no surprise and she votes for Eck and Sue right back and she is sassy and I love this side of Fern Fern gives no fucks Fern is like I've asked you the questions but your answers just haven't been that enlightening and she says that she, um, she thinks Ekansu wears a mask and that she absorbs, she uses the word absorb, she absorbs other people's traits and personalities and she kind of just watches the situation and she goes even further and she says something along the lines of, you know, I've noticed you doing this for a few days now and I actually find it quite disturbing. And I was like, oh my God, like that's that's going in. And I kind of felt like this was what I imagine a a posh fancy person's way to say you know I have your number bitch I see you I know how fake you are and I'm calling you out on it and I feel like this is what you would do if you were quite classy I wouldn't have said it in those words but I, I get what she's trying to say nevertheless next Levi is up and he kind of just returns serve to Colson and David he votes for Colson and says you didn't forgive me (laughs) I mean that's fair he voted for someone else over that as well for their lack of forgiveness I think it was no Zizi he voted for Zizi for lack of forgiveness and he voted for David and said you know we haven't connected so that's fine Louis is up next he votes for Zizi I mean despite the fact that everybody in the house bar Levi has gotten up and voted for Louis and called him lazy Louis still still will not release his weird feelings towards Zizi. So, if anything, the man's consistent. <laughs> he votes for Zizi. <laughs> and he says, she's not warm. I know if you thought she wasn't warm before, you're really, really not going to get a lot of warmth from her now. But I loved this. Zizi's face just said it all. It was really like, oh, please, here we go. Next, we get Marisha. She votes for Louis. I mean, we, sh- we just assume everyone's first vote was Louis. And then she votes for Ekansu. And this was a weird one. I had seen a clip on Twitter before I actually saw the episode. And she says, you know, if I get to the final, you know, I don't feel like I can beat you. And I'm like, that's such a cop out. Like sometimes in face to face nominations in the past, we've kind of gotten these cop out reasons, you know, like, oh, God, I'm voting for you because I don't think the pu- I think the public will save you or you're just so good. Like I- I'd never want to compete against you. And when I first saw this clip before tonight's episode, I kind of just thought this was like Marisha's way of having to vote for someone, but not wanting to be mean or say something nasty like Louis is Louis like whatever I don't think anyone's worried about hurting his feelings but I think Marisha tends to get on quite well with everyone in the house so no matter no matter who she would have voted for she probably would have given a really softball answer but I mean look it is what it is Eck and Sue goes fucking nuts she is not happy at all she feels 100% betrayed on every level And it doesn't help that Louis is right next to her, like stoking the flames and basically saying to Ekansu, oh, I don't like that at all. That's, oh, no, no. And he's just stirring the pot. And then Marisha goes over to do the kiss and Ekansu like refuses. So Marisha kind of just, you know, scampers back to her kissing booth spot. And it's really awkward and really uncomfortable for everyone around except Louis. Louis is loving this. And then Louis kind of gets into a little back and forth with Zizi because Zizi is consoling Marisha and Louis is telling her, stay out of it, it's nothing to do with you. And Zizi's like, it's nothing to do with you either, so shut up and stay out of it. I'm like, yeah, Zizi, go over there and hit him, headbutt him. But even better, it's Zizi's turn next. So Zizi gets up and says, I vote for Louis because he talks about other people and he needs to stay in his lane. And I think she calls him two-faced as well, which is beautiful. It's accurate and it's beautiful. And it's lovely that, you know, it would have been very easy if you were voting, you know, fourth 
or onward because you could honestly just vote for Louis and know that it's not really going to change the landscape. He's up anyway at this stage, so what's another vote for the same reason? But no, she gives us a new reason that is completely accurate and fair and that will piss Louis off in a whole new way. So I love Zizi. <laughs> She's really, really starting to grow on me. And then she votes for Ek and Sue, which I love right after she kind of gives the cold shoulder and the bitchy treatment to Marisha. And Zizi votes for Ek and Sue and says, well, you know, you voted for Louis, your friend, and you've been running around this whole time in here like his maid, making him cups of tea. So I think it's rich that you're now turning around and saying that he's lazy. And I'm like, oh my God, Zizi. Like, yes, thank you. Thank you for giving us what we wanted from a face-to-face nomination. So the votes are in and it is going to be Louis, David, Ekansu, Levi and Fern. And it's going to be a double nomination. Now, I didn't catch whether or not the housemates are aware of this. I imagine they would be considering that five of them are up and it open nominations so they can do the tally and they can count, you know, how many votes everybody got. And it would have been just Louis and Ekansu. But because there's more, they must have realised or we'll realise between now and tomorrow that there's going to be a doubler. And who do we think it's going to be? I think Ekansu is gone. I really, really hope that Ekansu is gone, if I'm honest. So I'm going to do my first prediction as Ekansu. My second prediction, I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to be a little bit adventurous and I'm going to say Levi because again, my thinking for Fern last week, which didn't pan out, was that it's a vote to save. So not as many people will probably vote to save Levi because he's a nice guy. There's plenty here to choose from. So it's not just like, you know, three people like Lauren, um, Fern and Louie. There's five people to choose from. And <sighs> Fern's kind of proven that people will vote to save her. David could go either way. And I think enough people are as crazy as I am that would prefer to see Louis stay in the house and have the entertainment rather than enjoy him getting kicked out and booed. Like he's going to be kicked out and booed at some point, but let's just keep the drama in the show for as long as we can. That's my mentality. So I'm going to hedge my bets and I'm going to say tomorrow's double eviction. We'll say goodbye to Ekansu and Levi. They're my predictions, but I don't know. What are yours? So that's kind of it for the face-to-face nominations. We then just get Ek and Sue having an absolute hissy fit for the rest of the episode. She is furious that Marisha has voted for her. She's calling her two-faced. And I'm like, really, Judas? You voted for your buddy, Louis Walsh. And poor Marisha is like distraught that she's caused such upset and she's following her around. She's really apologizing again and again. Ek and Sue is telling her, I need space. I need time. Leave me be. And she's given her the space and then she's coming back and checking in, you know, are you ready to talk and trying to apologise again. And I really admire Marisha for this maturity because I don't have this in me, even if I am in the wrong. If I was to try and apologise to someone and they were to kind of tell me in, you know, not so many words, piss off and leave me alone, that'd be me done. I wouldn't try again to apologise, take it or fucking leave it is my is my mentality. So I love that Marisha actually cares enough to want to apologise. Now, am I crazy in thinking that? Like, was Marisha really shady for what she did? I feel like I would probably have more side eye if she did it to someone like Zizi or who else is she really friendly with in there? Nikita. I just, I didn't really feel like Marisha was in the wrong, but I don't know if that's my dislike of Ekansu tainting that so I don't know maybe I'm in the wrong here and it just resorts to a point where Ekansu is lying on her bed with her big pigtail cuddling a giant teddy bear with her big watery mascara runny eyes like crying and sobbing full victim mode as though her parents have just told her that they're not going to Disneyland this year and Marisha is really trying to like hug her and she's rocking her at one point and Ekansu is just letting this fuel her more. I feel like Marisha should have just walked away, to be honest. It's like a spoiled child. You can't negotiate with them. They're little terrorists. And she's saying that she's sick of being judged by her looks and her followers and her shows. And it's just gone like full trauma mode. And it's too much. It's really too much. It was like watching a bad soap opera. And she's saying that she thought she was going to come into Celebrity Big Brother and nobody would judge me. Why would you think that? You're literally coming into a fishbowl where we all judge you and we vote on a regular basis whether or not we want to keep you. Like, Big Brother is 
just judgment. That That's all this show is. And then even when Marisha kind of gives up trying to get in her space and apologise, Marisha is off somewhere else. She's in, I think, the bathroom. And she's talking to Nikita. And Ekansu like follows her in there like an eight-year-old child. And she basically tells her that she doesn't know if she can ever forgive her for what she's done. And that, you know, take the crown. I hope you win. And it's just like that kid. You know that kid on your street when you were little that you used to hate playing with because it always ended in them throwing a tantrum because, you know, everyone wouldn't go along with whatever they wanted to do. And she'd storm home crying. She'd take her Barbies and leave. And then her crazy mom would come out and shout at you from the yard because you made the little princess cry. And I'm sure Rebecca Halligan, if you're out there listening, you've probably turned into a lovely young woman, you know, adult. But back then you were an absolute wanker. So anyway, getting back, Louis then asks Ekansu, you know, why did you vote for me? And Ekansu has different energy immediately. She wants to move on. She doesn't want to talk about it. And she's practically running away from Louis. Like she is walking but like faster than him to kind of get away from him down the hall. She doesn't really want to be close to him. And I don't know if this is like awkwardness because she's voted or if this is just she wants to distance herself, literally and physically distance herself from Louis in the house because she knows that he is unpopular outside. And Marisha is then crying in the diary room, which is horrible to see. She just feels like she's done something egregious. And then in the bedroom, Fern and Zizi kind of sit her down and they're celebrating her and they're reminding her of what a big day it is and about her Olivier nomination. And she starts to kind of smile again, which is nice. And I love Fern and Zizi for that. So Levi, meanwhile, is sitting down with Louis and Ekansu. And Levi is telling Ekansu that people are just jealous of you. And look at her face. She is so over the moon that he is telling her this. She is so delighted to hear that somebody else is saying exactly what she wants them to say. That everyone's just jealous of her. She's amazing. And she loves that she's getting this attention. She doesn't like, however, that Louis is anywhere near her. And every time he tries to chime in, she's blocking him out. She's shushing him. She's telling him to stop. And even at one point, he he tries to put kind of his hand on her slipper, you know, like a physical touch to kind of reassure um, somebody. And she's like shrugging off his hand from her slipper. Now, I'm not someone who's going to start feeling bad for Louis Walsh. Please, please don't think that I am. But he has actually been quite fond of Ekansu. He hasn't nominated her. He's been quite complimentary of her, if anything. And she has now just decided he's not popular. I'm not fucking with you. And she has dropped him like a flaming bag of dog shit. And I kind of looking at him going, oh, God, love you, Louis, because she was kind of his only buddy left now that Sharon is gone. So, yeah, I love to see bad people turn on each other. It brings me so much joy. And yeah, I'm very excited for tomorrow's double eviction. I'm dying to see Ekansu go. If if that happens, I'm going to cross my fingers and Psychic Spud is going to say Ekansu and Levi. But we shall wait and see. So I will chat to you again tomorrow night after evictions. And yeah, until then, have a lovely evening and sweet dreams.